Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the After Show. For this, the ninth episode of The Powers That Be, we're still on issue eight because this was the special annual issue, some vignettes into the lives of, of some of our characters. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, I know I had a lot of fun. I think everyone else, uh, it sounded like everyone else did as well. So we're still going to go around. We're still going to do stars and wishes, but uh, obviously the wishes are going to come from a little bit of a different perspective tonight. So we're going to start with Ecat. Ecat, what mm. are your stars and wishes? Well, the star is going to go to our GM for coming up with four completely separate stories that still tie into the grand arc of things. Um, I think it was a lot of fun to start looking into our individual characters and some of their background and stuff. I gotta say, I I, I made a lot of noises when Ray was playing. <laughs> <laughs> um as that was for raised wishes, don't beat me to the punchline face yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> as for wishes i because it was a bunch of vignettes i don't really have any at the moment but i like the ability that it now since we all leveled up to be able to <clears throat> buy in and bring in those new skills and abilities through these little vignettes yep so yeah, that's where it is. Okay. Yeah, uh, speaking of which, a, a bit of uh, game mechanics for our viewers, our characters did finally hit tier two uh, after the last session. So when we come back into the battle with Matrix and in Memoriam next time, uh, we're going to have some fun new toys to try out. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Ray, we'll go, we'll go over to you. Uh, stars and potentially wishes. Um. Echoing the stars for Patrick, dear Lord, man, that's <laughs> that's a spicy meet the ball. Uh, that's that's a lot, and I I am duly impressed and pleased with just the vibrancy of all of the descriptions and the world and just everything that you're kind of splintering us off. <clears throat> but yet there's there there's those tie-ins that move everything forward. Um and stars go to um all the other character all the other players for just you know just reveling in that and and working in that universe because it's <clears throat> In order, you can build the universe, but then you got to fill it. So uh, gives us an opportunity to really do our own stretching and finding and, um, you know, seeing where we stand. And I think maybe a little more risk taking, honestly, because you don't have to worry about the reaction from another player or another preconceived notion. Um, wishes. So, um, Trevor, you introduced me to like, oh, you got to check out this podcast uh, in that fateful month last year. Yeah. And I listened to the first episode. Oh, is that uh, Atari Twilight? Yes. Yeah. And what struck me, and it's because I really only listened to the one episode, but it did, it left an impression on me. And what the GM said was... Describe for me this. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you do? And what do you see? There were more player prompts. And I, my wish will be for Patrick to um, allow us, maybe dare us to do just as much of some of the storytelling because I think there were a couple of times I know I had a line, Trevor, I saw that you had a line, Ecat, you had a line, like we wanted to respond and like you, Patrick, you've got good stuff. I mean, it is really cool. Um, but I think maybe like just, I know you've got the story that's going to push us to the edge, but maybe make us fill in some of those uh make us paint the walls make us 
paint a little bit more of the picture or riff on what's that doing with our character to our character how are we processing this and um i mean clearly if, if we're like drawing a blank i have total faith that you can pick it up and then just you know move it right along no harm no foul but as we're getting comfortable now we're familiar. This is the ninth episode. So we kind of have our feet. We're now all at tier two. Maybe we can, maybe a couple of us or something, you can say, you know, and now what do you, you know, just basically go, what are you doing? That sounds good. I will add that podcast to, uh, to my list because that definitely sounds like something I need to, uh, listen to more. And yeah, um, from my old school days where everything where, you know, it's less a collaborative thing and more, you know, the, the DM is running the game and people are responding to it. It's something I'm trying to work myself out of. So I will put more of that in there. And definitely I'm like all for like anything you guys want to fill in by all means, you know, that works wonderfully. Like, so thank you very much for letting me like talk my way out of it. Yep. And at, at the very beginning, Yes, because I I feel like that's I kind of I need to go through these motions like, really, I'm doing this. No, I'm not. Crap. How do I do this? And <laughs> I need to go through my problem problem solving skills and how I yes. do this and try to not be like the the really not the captain cold, really, but just more of a smart ass. And I'm trying to embody that old 80s, 90s Bruce Willis type character. Okay. Starring Hudson Hawk as Gen X. <laughs> yes. I love that movie. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. yeah. That is yeah, yeah. You wish to start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to pull that DVD out and watch right? it. Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, right, let's go I don't think we have a copy of that. We might have to. We might have to rectify that. So let's go over to Julie next. Julie, what do you got? Well, yeah, yeah, Patrick. I mean, just coming up with and that the fact that you actually had two different possible scenarios for everybody, and then we each got to choose which one we wanted to go with, and knowing that. This was prepped in advance, at, you know. So this inc you know, includes, you know, you know, Magda as well. So you had ten different story, you know, mini stories. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Um. Yeah, that and so like what Ray was saying with the balance of. Giving you know, giving us a chance to kind of respond and help kind of said, paint the world a little bit more, and being that I was in the other game group, you know, I, at least one of the you know the one long standing one where sometimes if you didn't overtly guide people, things would go off the rails in spectacular ways that would get characters killed or you know yeah yeah sometimes some sometimes a little you know he had, he had to actually be a little bit on the no no that's a really bad idea um so i totally get where that's coming from just yeah self-preservation control issues and all of that <laughs> um but yeah, and I think that I think everybody really did a good job of being able to show more of their characters' personalities tonight. Just kind of say continuing to build on that. Yep. Um. So for me, yeah. my you know obviously the, the cheap answer is a star goes to everybody. Um, but not not because we all participated in that world building. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, Patrick, you set the scenarios and, and you had the backdrop and it was, you know, I'm not taking anything away from that, obviously, but especially since we all had NPCs that we were interacting with, we all 
did did at least some of the job of bringing those characters to life and into the world by the way that our characters interacted with them. Um, and so, you know, I, uh, Julie, you, you know, we, you with the other members of the Adam family, you know, we got to see, and you got to paint the picture of what the family looks like, a side of them that we haven't seen before. Because we saw, like, the one scene when we were at the, com you know, the one time when we were at the compound, um, and we've seen you, but we haven't seen much else of the interaction of the family. Um, Ecat, you know, you, you bring your family to life every time we see them on screen, <laughs> um, which is fantastic. I love that because that they play such an important part in your character's not only background, but personality and current life that we need to understand them in order to better understand you. And you you always hit it on the head as far as bringing them to life. Um, I mean, and, and, and Ray, dude. Um, so for, for those of you, you know, watching this that, that may not know, I, I think Ray is probably the, the most novice of the role players among us. Um, and you, I mean, dude, you hit it out of the park every single time. Um, and the way, you know, the way that you, I watched your face change from the way that you were reacting to the situation to the way that Gene was reacting to the situation. And those moments are freaking gold. Um, but you also still narrated it in a way that brought us, brought all the rest of us along with you and along with Gene. And those were two very separate paths. Um, so yeah, and it's, you know, everyone's doing just a phenomenal job of, of bringing, bringing their characters and the scenery and people around them to life and along on their stories. So I, I just, I think that's fantastic. Um, as for wishes, uh, I, I kind of want to throw the reporter off of a roof. Um, <laughs> she's just Yeet. A... <laughs> I don't know, and asking you shall receive. Right? Right? Um, <laughs> um, I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm going to <laughs> tell you what. I'm going to try to do some sleight of hand and have you know, slip a roofie into my drink and make it look like she did it, and then call Paw down on her. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but for, for wishes. Um, you know, again, I I, I want to see these little vignettes tie into the bigger story. Um, I want to see us continue doing what we're all doing because it makes for fantastic storytelling. Uh, I think honestly, both on the stream and within the group, I am loving this. I am loving this every time we get here. Um, so thank you all for that. Uh, finally, Patrick. All right. So for stars from a GM's perspective, the thing that went best for me tonight is... Everybody, uh, even though, you know, some of the, uh, so like, like I'm, I'm doing a lot of scene painting and stuff going on, but everybody had a lot of choice as to how they were going to direct things for the evening. So, for instance, like where Crash went and whatnot, I had no idea where that was going to end us. You, you had lots of options for places to go. The crux of the story was the annoying reporter. Is that, you know, the, the idea being, you do something good and there's a consequence to it. It's not a good consequence necessarily. So <laughs> Crash might be sitting there like, yeah, this was kind of nice. You know, like that kid was going to get flattened and I was going to watch it if I didn't do anything. And, oh, you know, that, that was good. But then you have this just annoying person, like what the hell is going on here? And, uh, and of course, trying to bring forth the thing like, okay, so what is, why is this happening to you was the bigger question later on. Much like, you know, you still have to go into, now that you know where the facility is, you know, are you going to try to go there alone? Or are you going to bring the rest of the group? We have a lot of different options that can happen with this in the yeah. future. And it gives you something to work with. Um, so I, I very much uh, enjoyed how that went along. Um, like with, uh, with Ray, all of the choices you had, like the outcome is based on where you decided to go. You know, so like going to the oldest inn in the world, um, this is something totally lifted from uh, Lovecraft, by the way. So except my 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 take on it. So this is a uh, kind of the place where, you know, the the old primal gods, had, you know, first manifested themselves into reality and whatnot. And so you got to see a little bit of where your being came from. And of course, since you, you know, since you're the heroes, none of you are little players in the world or the universe at large. It's just you may not realize that yet. 
because you know nobody as as it's long said uh nobody writes tales about the person who gets killed you know in their first fight as they walk out of town to fight the orcs and it's like well so why even have that in there instead you know make everything grand and eloquent and just, this is just the path along to that um, I very much enjoyed the emotional responses that people had to the various things inside of the story, which all of you had, which was my biggest star for the whole thing, I think, is that, you know, watching Black Ice, like, this person is the scariest person I run into. They're creepy. They're not right in the head. They do not, you know, behave like a person. They don't treat people like people. They're scary. And they are. That's how I wrote the person. He's, he's a freaking size. Well, they are a, a, a sociopath. They are not human in the regular sense. Um, so like the reporter, the reporter's creepy as all hell. How the hell did the reporter end up on the roof with you? You know, it's like, well, that's the, the, the conceit and the joke of the whole thing. But what's behind that is not, you know, normal. And it's kind of scary when you think about it. Yep. And of course, we had, you know, Pa getting angry at a bunch of frat boys like oh oh so this is what you're up to all right then <laughs> you know so like that's a, a good you know character emotional response and of course ray dealing with just the unusualness and uh going into terror of the situation where like first is like oh you have more money to throw around than you know what to do it <laughs> that's great thanks you know i'm just gonna go back and you know see if i have enough change to buy coffee tomorrow and um and thanks for pouring lemon juice in that wound now if you don't mind <laughs> and all of this of course is you know so i'm going along with the uh, various uh, like fundamental character arcs so these are things that are working on the you know either the current uh, uh the current character arc character that, that you've designed or some of the slightly bigger stuff for the uh for the long-term uh, development of your characters and once again this is all based on choices you make and you know which sorts of things you want to do. I've kind of like a sketch for how I think things are, but that can all change on a dime and it will. So I'm, I'm very uh, happy that that's moving along well and uh, that the story's working well and with the wishes. Um, well, actually uh, just as a last start, uh, thank you very much, Ray, for bringing on the like, okay, you know, here's something that we can adjust with, uh, with how we'd run the game, because once again, I'm just one out of a, you know, crew of six people who are playing this so i can definitely you know make some further adjustments um I'll, I'll listen to that podcast try to figure out how to best do the prompts and you know open up the uh the scene painting a bit more which will only make my job easier really in the long run so yeah i greatly appreciate that um and oh wait and see, give you more time to think of really fucked up situations for us hold on yes yes especially <laughs> you of of all the people who get fucked up situations you sir you picked one of the best things. Um, the oh, originating shit. story that this is based on, the primary character from the original story is Will. And so the interesting thing of shifting this is that you picked the same type of thing he is. So a lot of his garbage is just being dumped on to you right now. And so... <laughs> so long as it doesn't make me pregnant, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, uh, male wait. pregnancy, no. <laughs> So I, I want to, um, just to, as a note uh, on that, Patrick, because I know that's something that you and I have discussed before, um, giving giving the players the agency to do more of the narration is also a great way to bring in GM intrusions. Yeah, yes. exactly. Because you, you can simply say, here, here's two XP, and actually, here's what happens. And it's, that, it's great that giving if... people an opportunity to step on their own junk. Exactly. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, you thought that was a good idea, did you? <laughs> um sorry, before i go on did you have anything else um no otherwise i was just very happy with how things went um this was kind of a different uh style from our usual thing and i'm very glad that it worked out nicely so i i had a question for you cat actually mm -hmm. um so i i noticed that during the dur during the examination um shift kept kept talking about the you know how this was done to you Mm -hmm. was that a facet of your character that you were aware of because i'm not sure i was aware of the fact that you were given i mean i know that you the design of your character is the background is science but mm -hmm. i'm not sure that i had realized that she was given these these powers intentionally or at least pseudo intentionally 
were you aware of that? He was. She no. Okay. She, well, because you, you were playing play, it off like, oh yeah, a this is a thing. Player, yeah. I kind of suspected. Okay. Um, she received the powers as a side effect of this experimental okay. treatment for the cancer. Okay. Like it was a last ditch. She had stage four multi-systemic cancer. And this was a last ditch effort. And the side effect was she was always cold. Yeah, and as I... she's gotten older, the powers have come on. Because I, I, I heard that. And I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I was expecting the reaction of, I'm sorry, who did what to me now? Because it, they were certainly coming, Shift was certainly coming at it from from the perspective of that was done intentionally, and that was that was an interesting character bit that I. She had caught, not... yeah, I caught that, but she was just so fucking creeped out Fair. that this guy, this thing, is touching her, that she wasn't fully processing yeah, everything been. they were saying. I see she just wanted this guy, horizon. this person, to go away. <laughs> I, I'm I'm envisioning like the five of us sitting in in Sunbucks like the next morning, and you're sitting there with your coffee, and all of a sudden you stop and you look. Wait, what did that thing say? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm waiting for. I don't know if we should tell Tink that I don't need <coughs> hand warmers anymore. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Still got the hand warmers and occasionally pass one over to me because you know cat. Just cat. Yeah. Yeah. Rock. <laughs> cool. All right. Anything else anyone wants to bring up before we uh say goodnight? Nope. All right. Well, in that case, uh we expect to see you back two weeks from tonight. That will be May 8th. Um other than that, for Patrick, Ecat, Julie, and Ray, and Magda in absentia, I am Trevor the Vitruvian Meeple. This has been the Powers That Be Annual Number One. Have a good night. <laughs>